Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're planting potatoes. I have five different varieties I want to plant. We are in the original vegetable garden space and this is where I'm planting them because the new property just isn't quite ready yet. Things are moving a little bit slower, getting projects done, understandably so. So I do have three open raised beds in here. I'm not gonna plant as many as I had wanted to, but that's okay. I just wanna get them in the ground before it gets too late. So let me show you the varieties of potatoes that I have. So here are all five. We've got russet burbanks, which are a 100 day maturity potato. These are the famous Idaho type potato. They have kind of that net skin. This is kind of a smaller one. Sometimes, I mean, they get massive. We've got German butterball, which is also a russet type of potato. Both of these store really well. Russets always store great. Uh, this one is 100 to 130 day. We've got huckleberry gold, which is a 90 to 100 day maturity. Purple skin, white flesh. It's got really smooth, moist kind of flesh. And then I hate using the word flesh. I, don't, I gotta figure out a different word for that. Dark red Norlin has dark red skin and a white interior. And these are the earliest potatoes, so 75 days. I mean, that's not very long and we'll be able to start harvesting some early potatoes. Then we've got Yukon Golds, which are an 80 day potato. These are my personal favorites. I love to have these. In fact, like I always have a good stock of these in the kitchen, whether I grow them myself or have to buy them at the store. They're just really thin skinned and smooth flesh, very moist, and they're, they look like they already have butter on them, you know, when you mash them. Same with the German butter balls. Okay, now I'm gonna quickly cut these open just so you guys can see the interior. We can still plant them cut. Okay, we'll start with the dark red Norland first. So you can see there the red skin with the white flesh. Really smooth, nice one. And then we've got the Yukon Gold here. Isn't that a pretty potato? As potatoes go, that's really pretty. Really nice thin skin on this one. And I'm making sure that there is an eye on each one of these pieces, at least one or two good eyes. That's where the potatoes start sprouting from, which I'll talk about in a second. Okay, we've got the Russet Burbank. Whoops. That's pretty typical right there. German Butterball. Oh yeah. This one is the most yellow. I mean, even compared to the Yukon Gold, German Butterball beats it in color. And the last one is this Huckleberry Gold. So you can see here the purple uh, skin, rather, with the kind of whitish, it's almost kind of a yellow flesh there. I think it's supposed to be Huckleberry Gold. It's supposed to be gold, duh. God, Russell was trying to get involved during that whole process. <laughs> Russell, what are you doing? So I've actually already prepped all of my potatoes and to do that, it's super easy. Um, there's two ways you can go about it. You can pre-sprout your potatoes, which is a process called chitting, C-H-I-T-T-I-N-G, or pre-sprouting or green sprouting. And it's where you spread your potatoes out in kind of a not really warm, but slightly warm area several weeks before you're ready to plant. And it helps encourage them to sprout because you can see right there, they sprout from what are called eyes. And so it encourages them to sprout early so that when you go to plant, they're just a little bit ahead of the game. I don't ever do that with my potatoes because I, pretty, I have pretty good luck. Um, and we have a fairly long season. If you have a short season where you live, pre-sprouting might be the way to go. There are videos on that out there that you can look up. I've never done one because I don't usually do it. Um, so like I said, they sprout from what are called eyes. Now, if you have potatoes that are itty bitty like this, you can plant them just like this and you plant them with the eye facing up. If you have larger potatoes, you can cut them in half or into quarters or whatever. You just wanna make sure that whenever you cut them, you're le left with at least one or two good eyes. Now I cut this particular potato just in half. I could have cut it more times than that. See how many eyes? I could have cut it like right down this way and had two really good eyes on that piece. But I knew that I was gonna be planting them in this smaller space and so I have way more potatoes than I need so it really wasn't necessary to cut them up into little pieces, but you really can get quite far with your potatoes. Typically one pound will plant 10 to 12 feet, just as a point of reference there. So let me turn the camera around and show you my trays that I have all prepped. There's one, when you cut them, you do wanna make sure to do it a day or two in advance. You can see these don't look that great because they're kind of dry and that's what you want. So I cut these so oh, day before yesterday and just let them sit out on the kitchen counter and they have kind of healed over and that helps moisture not en enter in and rot the potato. Uh, and then with the smaller ones I, or the ones that didn't have super strong eyes, I just left them in here and I'll go ahead uh, and just plant them whole because you can see like on this potato, this one didn't really have strong eyes coming. Let's see, that's not even a good example. Oh, this is a great example. So see this potato right here, 
You could cut it right here in half and have these two eyes, but since that's all it's really showing on this potato, I just am gonna plant it whole. So we've got butter balls and Burbanks right here, and these are the other two beds I'll be planting in three by six and another three by six. We've got huckleberry golds and red norlands on this tray. And then I'm planting one full bed of Yukon golds because that is my favorite. Before I am able to plant though, I do need to work the soil in these beds. It is really good soil, but potatoes, because they're forming all of their tubers or potatoes underneath the surface of the soil, they really need it to be lofty and light and fluffy so that they ha don't have a hard time trying to size up into nice big potatoes. Um, and my soil is pretty good here, but it does compact and it reduces over time. Like, I don't even know where it goes, but it, like, in the corners here, see, like, my soil level, it kind of, like, dips and I have to add more in. So, I got my hands on something I've never tried before, and I'm so excited about this. This is a compost called Land and Sea. So, it's got peat and humus and forest compost, and then it's got lobster and crab meal. Um, so I'm going to be adding in a generous amount of this compost, and then I'm just gonna turn it over by hand with my garden fork, and I'll be adding in some biotone as well. And this is the part where I'm gonna be thankful for the breeze, because this will be a little bit of work. So I'm gonna go ahead and prep all the soil, which means I'm going to pull up my drip tube that I have in all the beds, and I'll just add in my compost and my biotone and turn it over. It's pretty simple, really. Just a lot of work. Looks like the sun's coming out for us a little bit today, but you can see that this bed has been prepped. The soil is beautiful. So it already had a layer of leaf mulch that I put on there last fall, and then almost three bags of land and sea compost and biotone. So this soil is fully charged and ready for a new crop. I went ahead and made my first trench. I want to do three altogether in this bed, but with the amount of soil in here, it's easiest to do just one at a time. So I did the center one first, and let me show you how you go about planting your pieces of potato. So you can see this one is all prepped. It's cut and dried, calloused over. So you just put them at the bottom of your trench with their eyes facing up, just like that. And if you've got a whole potato, you do just the same thing. We wanna go about eight to 12 inches apart from each other with the eye facing up, just like that. So I'm only gonna do half this bed with this variety. This one is the Butterball, German Butterball, and then Russet Burbanks will be on the back half. So that's how the row looks uncovered, and then I just take my soil and cover them back over. Some people will do a trench about eight inches deep, and they'll put their pieces in and only cover the pieces about three to four inches with soil. And once they start seeing growth coming out, they'll wait till the growth is about eight inches tall, and then they'll continue to fill in the trench until it's at soil level. Um, it's called hilling potatoes. I like to just cover mine over, so I do my trench about six inches deep. I cover them all the way over, and then I wait to see growth, and then a little bit later on, I'll come in with an additional side dress of compost and kind of hill up around them, and it'll just be above soil level. And what hilling does is it allows them to stay a little bit cooler because there's most, more soil on top. It also can benefit your potatoes if you have really hard soil and you're planting in the ground somewhere because it gives them a little bit more elbow room. You may possibly get more tubers out of it if you hill them up. So anyway, but I like to just fill my trenches in right at the get-go and then hill up a little bit later with additional compost, which does add additional nutrients into the soil. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, I'm gonna continue planting this exact same way. I've gotta do two more trenches in this bed, and then I'm gonna to go to the other two beds over there and do the exact same process to get them all planted. So. Here we go.
I got them all planted and watered in and I'm kind of hunkered by the fence at the moment because we keep getting big gusts of wind. <laughs> I'm really glad that I got this project done and the potatoes are tucked into their raised beds. I was able to fit about 24 potatoes in each bed. So I think we'll have quite a large harvest and I'm excited about that. So at this point, I just make sure to keep them consistently watered, which means in the summertime when it starts to get really hot, a deep soak about once or twice a week, but it depends on you know what the heat's like, if we're getting a lot of wind, if you've had any rain. Um, so I just try to make sure that that top inch or two of soil has dried out between waterings. And the most important time to make sure that they're being well watered is when they start to flower, because that's when they start to form their tubers. So you just wanna keep your eye out for that. As far as harvesting goes, it's really easy to know because the plant will tell you when they're ready to be harvested. It, they'll start to turn yellow and kind of flop over, and then you know that they're ready to, they're ready to be dug. Um, you can harvest some early if you want to. You can kind of lightly put your hand under the soil and pull young potatoes out if you want to, and use that day guide because each potato variety will come with that maturity day. Um, and then if you put that on the calendar, you don't even have to watch the plant really. You will know that, you know, the Yukon Golds, what are they, in 85 days? So in approximately 85 days, I should have potatoes ready to harvest. And the only other thing is that I may follow up and do a side dress application of Garden Tone in maybe like 30 or 45 days or something like that just to give them a little extra boost. Um, I want them to form nice big tubers. So anyway, got my potatoes planted, got that chore done. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope this video was helpful and we will see you in the next one. Bye.